everyone, welcome back. I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at OccupyFantasy.com. Here with a look at the wide receiver position for Week 14 contests on FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo. We're publishing these position preview videos throughout the rest of the NFL season and postseason, so if you like that, please consider subscribing to the channel below. We would also appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up on the video. Let us know that you like this content and you want to see more of it. If you have any questions about wide receivers on this slate, be happy to see you in the comments section, obviously, but you can also consider joining our Discord where we have Occupy staff and members available to discuss every single slate throughout the rest of the entire season. You see here that what I have up on the screen is our underperforming wide receiver list for Week 14. Our Top underperforming wide receiver in week 14, the same top underperforming wide receiver that we had last week. That's DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. He has 24% of team targets from Russell Wilson over the last three weeks of play, 41% of the air yards at wide receiver and tight end. Uh, another strong spot here for Metcalf in week 14. We're going to go back to the well there in tournament lineups at relatively uh, low roster percentage. Does not project to be super popular in this matchup. Darius Slayton with the New York Giants. He is the next guy on the list, 4,400 on DraftKings, 5,500 on FanDuel. 24% of team targets for the Giants over the last three weeks of play. 36% of the air yards at the wide receiver and tight end positions. Um, should still be a top guy there. They're not expecting Kadarius Toney this week. They're hopeful that they'll have Sterling Shepard back. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. But Slayton should still be a primary outside threat at wide receiver for the Giants. The biggest issue with Slayton this week will be it's Mike Lennon under center again. Zay Jones with the Las Vegas Raiders. This is an attractive spot for him. 3,400 on DraftKings, 4,800 on FanDuel. 21% of team targets uh, from Derek Carr on the Raiders here. 33% of the air yards the last three weeks of play. Darren Waller not returning for the Raiders. That's pretty important in terms of forecasting what Zay's overall involvement in the passing game will be because without their top weapon, uh, that means they're going to have to go somewhere else other than Hunter Renfro uh, to mix things up in this game. And Zay Jones that much higher on the totem pole as places that Derek Carr will look to throw the football here in week 14. Traquan Smith with the New Orleans Saints. He's 4,800 on DraftKings, 5,600 on FanDuel. Has 22% of team targets for the last three weeks of play, 28% of the air yards. The biggest thing to keep in mind here with Traquan is that this is a slate where it looks like a lot of people are going to play Taysom and a lot of people are going to play Alvin Kamara, but they're not going to play the weapons at wide receiver against the Jets. Jets are a really bad all-around defense against the pass and the run. Traquan is looking like the most likely pass catcher, you know, at wide receiver or tight end to see opportunities from Taysom in this game. And so therefore you got to like him as a tournament option as a result. We have two tight ends on our underperforming wide receiver list this week. We love those opportunities in DFS tournaments. One of them is going to be a pretty popular play this week, and that is Mark Andrews with the Baltimore Ravens. Has an astonishingly high 37% of team targets for the last three weeks of play. Uh, 48% of the team's air yards to wide receivers and tight ends. Double-digit targets in a lot of games recently. Hard to dislike Mark Andrews against the Cleveland Browns, who've allowed six most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends over the last four weeks of play. Skipping a name on our list, in the same game, we have Jarvis Landry, the top wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns, also as an underperformer. 28% of the team targets from Baker Mayfield, about 18% of the air yards. This is an interesting opportunity for at least a skinny stack with the wide receiver and tight end positions in that Baltimore-Cleveland game that are both underperformers. Uh, Michael Gallup with the Dallas Cowboys. His overall share of the targets and air yards kind of unreliable at this point in recent weeks because obviously there's been a lot of moving parts, you know, with Amari Cooper missing time, with CeeDee Lamb missing time. But Gallup still well entrenched there. Gallup with a pretty solid 13.2 yard average depth of target when he does receive attention from Dak Prescott. So certainly like him in a game that we actually like as a stack opportunity this week. Finally, Kyle Pitts with the Atlanta Falcons. Feels like the DJ Moore of the second half of the season for the underperforming wide receiver list. Just 5,500 on DraftKings now, 5,900 over on FanDuel. 21% of the targets for Matt Ryan, 28% of the air yards. Probably going to be heavily involved once again. Those are the guys we like the most for tournaments this week. Usually give you them at the end of the video, trying something a little different, giving them to you at the beginning of the video. For guys that you should be considering more in all lineup types, maybe more especially low-risk lineup types, um, we are going to stick to most obvious, the best plays on the slate. And who are those guys? Those guys are Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is the top one on the list. 31% of the targets from Patrick Mahomes, 37% of the air yards of the last two weeks of play. He has a team high 15 red zone targets on the season, uh, which means that when they are actually inside the 20, they do look for Tyreek pretty heavily. A lot of the preconceived notions of Tyreek Hill uh, have been 
that he is strictly a deep threat wide receiver. They've been using him differently to combat some of the looks that opposing defenses have been presenting to them this season, uh, which is why they've been struggling overall as a team. That's the main narrative anyway. Uh, Tyree Kill just 8,500 here on DraftKings, 8,700 over on FanDuel. Pretty strong play in all lineup types this weekend. Jamar Chase with the Cincinnati Bengals. Just 6,900 on DraftKings, 7,200 over on FanDuel. San Francisco allowing the fifth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers this season. 22% of the targets for the last three weeks, 26% of the air yards from Joe Burrow. A couple of games below our expectation for Jamar Chase, not on our underperformers list, but still has a really, really strong role that we want to exploit against the Niners here, I think, this weekend. Mike Williams just finally announced as reinstated as a close contact. Uh, Keenan Allen tested positive for COVID-19, so he'll be out this week, unfortunately. Hope that he gets well. Uh, but Mike Williams will be able to play now after testing negative, according to the NFL's protocol here. Going to lead the team in opportunity at wide receiver now. 22% of the targets for the last three weeks of play, 25% of the air yards, and will be in line for even more in this particular game without Keenan available. Obviously, the Chargers are going to need another wide receiver without Keenan available. And that guy is going to be Guyton. Jalen Guyton will be the only other, not the only other, but the main other wide receiver that you should be considering from the Chargers this week in your lineup. It's just $3,400 here on DraftKings. It has been playing a ton already, as is. We'll slide into a larger role without Keenan available. It's never going to be a bad idea to consider playing Chris Godwin of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Team leader in targets over the recent weeks. Obviously, blow-up game last week against the Atlanta Falcons. But it illustrates what we need out of Chris Godwin for a true ceiling result. Godwin with a relatively low eight out on his targets. So he needs those games where the volume goes a little berserk for him to really get into an, a place where he can give you over 30 fantasy points per game because he's not seeing these 10 to 15 plus yard downfield throws that he can catch and then break for a touchdown. He's going to get there on repeated opportunities to catch the football at short yardage distances. I think there'll be another top opportunity here in week 14 because this game is the highest total on the slate and Chris Godwin will obviously be peppered with targets if that scoring is realized. Julio Jones from the Tennessee Titans was just announced as uh, being officially available to return on Sunday. He will be reinstated from injured reserve. He's been practicing all week. He's ready to go. Everything the Titans say is that he's basically uh, completely healthy now, which is always uh, something that we're skeptical of with Julio at this point in his career, unfortunately. But just $5,400 on DraftKings, 6500 over on FanDuel. The only clear elite weapon that Ryan Tannehill has available in a really good matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Should be all over Julio Jones this week. Um, doesn't really matter what the target proje- projection is or his roster percentage projection is right now. I think a lot of providers are going to be low on him at this point. He'll end up being one of the most popular plays on this slate because he's just priced way too low for somebody that's probably going to see the majority of the targets from Ryan Tannehill this weekend. Some other wide receivers that I am considering at this point on Saturday. Hunter Renfro, obviously going to be the main weapon now for the Raiders once again without Darren Waller available. And actually like stacking Kansas City this week, so will make a ton of sense to consider somebody like Renfro on the other side of that game. Obviously, Marquise Brown, the top wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson being a high-ceiling quarterback. Uh, I do think Mark Andrews has seen a bit better of a role in recent weeks, so maybe Marquise Brown won't be as popular, but we'll we'll still have upside to be one of the better wide receivers on this slate. Stephon Diggs, one of the most popular plays that you can consider. Pretty pricey. 8,100 on DraftKings, 8,200 over on FanDuel. Has uh, the second most red zone targets on the slate behind Chris Godwin in the same game. So both those guys are going to be strong options this week. And then CeeDee Lamb, teammate of our underperforming wide receiver Michael Gallup this week. He's the ball hog. He's the opportunity hog. He'll see the most targets from Dak Prescott in all likelihood, uh, not just this week, but every week throughout the rest of the season. So CeeDee Lamb going to be a strong option to consider in Week 14 contest once again. That's a lot of talk about wide receivers. I hope this was helpful as a preview for you for how to attack the upcoming slates here on FanDuel and DraftKings this Sunday. Um, If you need more information, you can check out the daily plug. It's already posted at OccupyFantasy.com. We have information on our favorite players at every single position posted for you in there. We also give you strategies and tips on how to deploy those players effectively in the types of contests that you're aiming to play this weekend. Whether those are your lowest contests, those would be your 50-50s, head-to-heads, double-ups, or high-risk contests. Uh, those will be anything with exponential playouts or large field tournaments like the Millionaire Maker on DraftKings, right? Uh, you definitely want to consider 
uh, the type of contest you're playing before building a lineup. It's the most important part of the plug. You certainly don't want to miss that. As always for Occupy, I am Chris. Thank you for watching this video, and we will talk to you soon.